Hello and welcome to this video all about buy to let mortgages. I'm going to be explaining exactly what a buy to let mortgage is, how you can qualify for one, all the different options available and what you need to consider when making a decision as to the right buy to let mortgage for yourself. Obviously you're here watching this video because you're considering becoming a landlord and taking out a buy to let mortgage. It's something you're interested in. So do make sure you stick around for the full video so that you can make that informed decision. If it's the first time we're meeting, my name is Michael. I am a qualified UK mortgage advisor and I have a passion for making the mortgage process simple. And that's what this channel is all about. So if you've enjoyed what I've had to say today, please do consider subscribing and smash that like button along the way if you've enjoyed the video. And now let's get on with everything buy to let. Firstly, what is a buy to let mortgage? Well, it's a loan secured against the property that you've purchased with a view to renting that property out. Got to be rented out to someone you don't know, can't be a family member, and obviously you are not allowed to live in the property as well. And it's a quite broad term with regards to the type of property involved or the different types of tenants. But generally, the main use of the word buy to let is for a house or a flat that you rent out to a single unit, so one person, family, etc., on what's called an AST, an Assured Tenancy Agreement. There are other types of buy to let out there, more specialist areas such as multi-unit freehold blocks, so a block of flats on a single title, HMOs, which are houses of multiple occupancy. So that's things like student lets, where the property is divided up into separate bedrooms or with individual locks, so you have many people sharing shared facilities. And then there's also things like holiday lets, Airbnbs, etc. Most lenders, though, they typically want experience as a landlord before they will allow a mortgage on a more specialist area, usually a minimum of 12 months. Not impossible, some lenders out there will allow you to go straight into that, but ideally the majority, they want you to walk before you run and have that experience. How do you qualify for a buy to let mortgage? Well, first thing you need is the deposit and it's typically a minimum of 25% deposit. You may need more depending on the figures and the rental assessment, how expensive the property is, for example, but typically 25% is where you need to be. And where a buy to let mortgage differs from a residential mortgage, the loan amount you're eligible for is not so much based on your personal income and expenditure. It is more about the property, in particular, the rental assessment of the property. So some lenders will require a minimum personal income to issue a buy to let mortgage, but there are plenty that don't, provided you can evidence you're a UK taxpayer. Even if you're just paying a pound in tax, there are some lenders out there that will lend if you've got very minimal personal income. When it comes to the rental assessment of the property, we'll talk more about that later on. A lot of lenders out there require you to own your own home, so be an owner occupier, either that's outright or have a residential mortgage, but not all. There are some that will do it if you're a non-owner occupier, or even if you're a first time buyer, it is possible to get a buy to let mortgage. Just in these scenarios, your options are more limited because of the number of lenders that accept that scenario. And on a buy to let mortgage, you're still required to pass credit checks, so you've got to keep that credit file in order. If you any doubt, done plenty of videos all about credit files, uh, go and give them a watch i'll put one up on the screen now and also make sure you go and get that check my file report as the starting point if you want to check your credit file so when it comes to your options with buy to lets there's different things you need to consider as opposed to a residential the first thing you need to consider is whether you buy it in your personal name or in a limited company name historically up until three or four years ago the majority of buy to lets were done in personal names mainly because one there was a lot more options available lenders wise but the main reason was because of the tax breaks that you got by doing it in your personal name Income. And this has all now changed with the new rules the government brought in a few years ago. So now it's not as clear cut as to whether you do it in a personal name or in a limited company name. And to get the answer to that question, you really need to speak to your accountant or a tax advisor because it's all about your tax position. As a mortgage advisor, I'm not allowed to advise whether you should go with a limited company or in your personal name. So do take advice on that from a qualified accountant or tax advisor. Once you've then got the decision of which route you want to go down, someone like like me can facilitate it. If you do go down the option of a limited company, you can't just do it with any old limited company. It does need to be what's called a special purpose vehicle company, which basically means it's a company set up for the purposes of buying and selling property. And there are a handful of SIC codes that need to be recorded against the company at company's house. Your accountant or tax advisor can help you with that and make sure you've got the right codes. If you go in your personal name, a few things to consider. It is much easier to get started if you're doing it in your personal name. A lot of lenders will 
like you to have that experience so maybe do your first one or two in your personal name it does then make it easy once you've got that track record to then switch and go down the company route and there's more lenders available to you and generally the interest rates and the fees and costs associated will be slightly cheaper than if you do a limited company buy to let as i mentioned earlier on the company side of things a lot of lenders do want that experience not all but the majority do require that 12 month period there are fewer lenders that offer limited company buy to lets so that does narrow the pool of options available but this gap is closing there are more and more lenders offering limited company buy to lets as they now know there is a market for that you'll also be required to sign a personal guarantee so don't fall into the trap to thinking that the company owns the property and there's no personal liability should things go wrong all lenders will want you to sign that personal guarantee and it doesn't get round credit scoring they will still credit score you as a borrower so got to keep that credit file clean one of the major differences between uh, buy-to-let mortgages and residential mortgages are that you are still able to quite freely decide on whether you want to do a repayment mortgage or an interest-only mortgage. You can still do it on a residential mortgage, but it's very, very difficult. You've the strict criteria on it. On a buy-to-let, that's different. You have the option. So on a repayment mortgage, you're obviously paying the monthly interest and you're also paying some capital each month so that the balance of what you owe is decreasing each month. And eventually, at the end of the term, you will owe nothing into the bank. On an interest only mortgage, you're only paying the interest each month, but that means at the end of the term, the bank will want their money back. But on the interest only side of things, it does make it a lot cheaper each month. So it frees up cash flow. This is often a, the way a lot of investors go so that they're able to increase the cash flow, save up more money and buy further properties further down the line. But you've just got to have that plan of what you're going to do when the term ends, whether that's sell the property or remortgage and extend the term. On buy to let, you're not limited with the term like you are on a residential, where often it's got to be finished by retirement age. You can go way beyond retirement age on a buy to let mortgage but which option you go down you need to consider what's right for you what your long-term plans and goals are the different types of mortgages well very similar to residential really you've got fixed rate mortgages trackers variables I've done different videos all about that so i'm not going to go into too much detail because it's similar to the residential but again you pick the one that's right for your scenario you know if you're wanting to get the property and flip it quite quickly having done some work to it for example you don't then want to tie up to a long five-year fixed rate where there's going to be higher early repayment penalties so things like that that you need to consider pay attention as well to the details so the costs the entry costs so what are the setup fees and also the exit costs what do you have to pay if you want to pay the mortgage off what the early repayment charges are pay attention to these things because they can come back to bite you later on down the line if your situation changes or you haven't factored them in the term of the mortgage is not as important as it is on a residential because like i said earlier you can keep remortgaging and extending the term but it's something you need to consider particularly if you're taking it out on repayment because the shorter the term the more your monthly repayments are going to be one area as well you need to consider is stamp duty if you're unsure about stamp duty and not sure exactly what it is how much it is i've done a video on it which i'll put on screen but buy to lets are still liable for stamp duty but the other thing you need to remember is there is a second property stamp duty tax so if you already own a property i.e your residential and you're buying a buy to let as well as the normal stamp duty you will also be required to pay an additional three percent second property property stamp duty on the full price. So if you buy a buy to let for 100,000, that's an extra 3,000 pounds you need at completion to pay your stamp duty. How much can you borrow? Well, as I mentioned earlier, it's based on the rental assessment of the property. And it's not the rent you're currently achieving or the property is currently achieving. It is what a valuation says of that rental assessment is. Following a survey, it's what the valuer says the rental assessment of the property is. Now, the calculation that lenders use is a bit complicated and takes a lot to get your head around. So I am gonna do a follow-up video all about this because it's far too complex to do in one video. But to make it simple for you, a lot of lenders have buy to let calculators and they are really easy to use and they will just give you the answers so what i'm going to do is leave a few links in the description so that you can go to these lenders put in your figures and work out what you can borrow but make sure you come back and watch the follow-up video when it is released if you're watching this and it is released it'll follow at the end of this video so that was pretty much a beginner's guide to buy to let there's a lot more to it complicated area but hopefully i've made it nice and simple for you if you haven't found the answer you came here for today please do drop 
drop me a comment below and I will get back to you with an answer. But for those of you that have found all the answers you were looking for, hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do smash that like button. Consider subscribing. Really, it all helps to grow the channel so I can reach a wider audience. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Michael. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.